Marching along the road was a soldier. Because he'd been to the wars, he carried a pack on his back and a sword at his side, and now he was on his way home. On the road, he met an ugly old witch. Good evening, soldier, she said. What a great pack and fine sword you have there. You're certainly a real soldier, and for that you shall have all the money you want. I say, thank you, old witch, said the soldier. The witch then told him to look at the big tree by the side of the road. It was hollow, and if he climbed to the top, he'd see a hole down which he could slide right to the bottom of the trunk. The witch was to tie a rope round his waist so she could pull him up again. Pray tell me what I am to do at the bottom of the tree, asked the soldier. Get the money, replied the witch. Listen to me. And she went on to say how he'd find a passageway down there, all lit with hundreds of lamps. There would be three doors, and behind the first door he'd see, sitting in the middle of the room, a great treasure chest with a dog on top. This dog would have eyes as big as teacups, but not to worry, as he'd take her blue check apron with him and sit the dog on this. He'd find copper coins in the chest, and the soldier could take as many as he liked. However, in the next room, where a dog with eyes as big as mill wheels sat on a chest, the soldier would find silver coins, and in the third room was a chest of gold. But the dog sitting on this chest, well, his eyes were as big as watchtowers, but he'd not harm the soldier as long as he was put on the blue check apron. But what am I to give you, old witch, said the soldier, for you can't be doing this for nothing. Oh, I am, I am, she said. Not a penny do I want, but you, you can bring me back an old tinder box my grandmother left there by mistake. So giving the blue check apron to the soldier, the witch then tied the rope around his waist and he climbed down the tree, let himself right down inside the trunk, and everything was just as the witch had said. In the first room, sure enough, was the dog with eyes as big as teacups. A hello, pretty fellow, said the soldier as he popped the dog onto the witch's apron and took as many pennies as his pockets would hold. Closing the chest, he put the dog back on top and went into the next room, where the dog with eyes as big as mill wheels sat and stared at him. Now don't stare at me like that. You'll hurt your eyes, said the soldier and he set the dog on the apron. Catching sight of all the silver in the chest, the soldier threw away all the pennies, and he filled his pockets and his pack with nothing but silver. Then he went into the next room, and that was terrifying. The dog really had a pair of eyes, each as big as a watchtower, and they rolled round and round. Uh, good, good, good evening said the soldier, and he saluted. He'd never seen such a dog before, and as he stood staring, he thought, well, the sooner it's done, the better. So he removed the dog from the chest. What a sight of gold was there, and so he threw away all the silver and took gold instead. He even filled his boots, and he could hardly move. After putting the dog back on the chest, and slamming the door, the soldier shouted up through the tree that he was ready. Have you got the tinder box? called the witch. Oh, I'd clean forgotten, said the soldier, and he went to find it. The witch then hauled him up, and there he stood with his pockets, his boots, his pack, and his cap full of gold. When the soldier asked the witch what she was going to do with the tinder box, he was told it was none of his business. This made him so angry, he took out his sword, cut off her head, and then he marched into town. Of course, he was a rich man now, so he booked into the finest inn and ordered his favourite food for dinner. The next day, he went shopping, and he bought himself new boots and clothes. He met many people in the street who all talked to him and told him about their town. They even told him the story of their king and his beautiful daughter. 
It was very sad, though, as no one was allowed to see the princess, because it had been foretold that she would marry a common soldier, and the king didn't like this. How I'd like to see her just once, thought the soldier, but it was no use wishing for it. So he went on with his merry life, visiting the theatre, driving in the king's gardens, and giving money to the poor, until in the end he had two pennies left. Of course he had to shift out of his fine rooms, and none of his friends came to see him any more. One night, when he couldn't even afford a light, he remembered that there was a candle end lying in the tinder box. No sooner had he begun to rub the flintstone to strike a light, then sparks flew, the door burst open suddenly, and there stood the dog with eyes as big as teacups. What are my master's orders? What's all this? asked the soldier. By Jove's, what a useful tinderbox if it will get me anything I want. Go and get some money, he said, and no sooner was the dog gone than he was back again with a big purse of pennies in his mouth. What a wonderful tinderbox it was. If he struck it once, the dog with copper coins came. If he struck it twice, the dog with silver came. And if he struck it three times, in came the dog with gold. So the soldier moved back into the fine rooms and once more was wearing his beautiful clothes. One night as he sat thinking about the beautiful princess shut up in her castle with many towers, he had an idea. Striking the tinderbox once, the dog with eyes as big as teacups came in. I know it's the middle of the night, said the soldier, but just the same, I'd love to see the princess, only for a minute. The dog was off like a streak, and he returned with the princess on his back. She was still asleep, but she was so beautiful, the soldier just had to give her a kiss. Then the dog took the princess home. Next morning... The princess told the king and queen that she had had a strange dream and what had happened. The queen thought it a nice story, but insisted that one of the ladies-in-waiting sit by the princess' bed at night. Sure enough, the dog came again to fetch the princess, and the lady-in-waiting ran after them. She put a big cross on the door of the soldier's house and went home to bed. After the dog had returned the princess, he saw the cross, so taking some chalk, he put crosses on all the doors in town. When the king and queen came into town with the soldiers, it was useless, as everywhere they looked there were crosses. But the queen was a very clever woman, and she took her big golden scissors, cut up a piece of silk, and sewed it into a pretty little bag, which she filled with flour. She tied this to the princess' back, and then cut a tiny hole in one corner, so the flour could run out and leave a trail. The dog never noticed the flower running out, but the next morning when the king and queen came with their soldiers, they went straight to the right house. The soldier was thrown in prison to be hanged. Fortunately, he saw through the iron bars the bootmaker's boy, and he asked him if he would go and get the tinderbox, and for this he had earned four pennies. This done, the soldier was then led out to the gallows, where he asked if he could smoke one last pipe. The soldier struck the tinderbox one, two, three times, and suddenly there were all the dogs. Now help me, cried the soldier, so I shan't be hanged. And the dogs flew at the judges and the whole council, as well as the king and queen. The soldiers were very frightened, and the people cried out, Dear kind soldier, be our king and marry the lovely princess. So they put the soldier into the king's coach, and the dogs ran ahead of it, while all the people cheered and whistled. The princess came out of the castle and became queen. The wedding lasted eight days, and the dogs sat at the table staring, with their great eyes going round and round.